Next up is our ESSA plan update. Uh, Joel, do we have you for a little while or, do, or are you at risk of losing you? Because if we're going to yeah. lose... You have me for at least half an hour. Okay. Okay. Um, Tiffany, if we don't keep a, a quorum, we can still act on, on this, correct? Okay. Let me turn this on. Okay. We, all right. We're good. So in the interest of time, and then, um, we will jump then to the action item. So uh, we, we're going to briefly update you on where we're at in the process, um, but you have that information in your board docs as well as it's been emailed. So let's jump to the action item, um, which Diana will review. <laughs> Great. Uh, Diana Sudworth, Director of Teaching and Learning. Um, the piece of ESSA that I'm here to talk to you about today is the piece that uh, requires us to describe in our state plan the extent to which children who live in conditions of poverty or an, ethnically, an ethnicity other than white are served at disproportionate rates by ineffective, out of field, or inexperienced teachers. There's three components to that. One is the inexperienced teacher. We've defined that as less than three years. That, that part is settled. One part is uh, teachers teaching out of field. We also have that part settled through our licensing system. But a part that we've continued to struggle with is the part with the ineffective teachers. So you may remember that we came and we spoke about this earlier. And we were prepared to use the effectiveness ratings from the uh, Utah evaluation system. When we pulled the data on that, we found that less than one hundredth of a percent of our teachers have been rated as ineffective. So that data isn't telling us anything about the distribution of teachers. So we continue to have the conversation about is that really the right piece of data to use? And that conversation was compounded by the fact that charter schools haven't been using that system. Um, uh, not everybody uses the same tool. These are all things that you discussed when you were considering approving that. And so um, we've come up with an alternate idea. And the alternate idea is that we would base effectiveness based on student growth um, instead of basing it on the evaluation of the teachers itself. And by, um, by using student growth, then we would be able to, we're, we're making the assumption that students grow academically when they have effective teachers. And remember, this is different than student achievement. So student growth takes care of the problems with um, who the students might be in a particular class. It, 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 it takes that out of the equation. We've run some preliminary numbers on that, and while we're still finding that we're, we're still not finding any kind of real inequitable distribution, um, which is good news, actually, uh, that our teachers seem to be effectively distributed, we at least have more data, and data that's more than less than 10 teachers in the whole, uh, in the whole state. So what we're here to ask you today, um, because we have not heard back from the Department of Education yet, uh, about whether or not this could be approvable is that you would approve us either doing this which is where we're headed right now that we're that we're in favor of or revert back to what you've already approved which would be using the evaluation system should the Department of Education say that we can't use student growth alone okay. um. board member or take vice chair Brittany Cummins um, I have a question about growth, and I know <laughs> that under our current SAGE um, test, we haven't reached that kind of that maximum capacity where students still across the state have a lot of room to grow. I guess I'm curious, statistically, what that would look like is you have students who kind of reach that higher proficiency level and what that growth could look like because I mean a really good teacher could be teaching in a classroom with high proficiency um, and wouldn't have possibly as much growth as a, a as an effective teacher in a classroom where where there's 
possibly a lot more room for growth. And so I was wondering if you could give me some of the, I, I am not a statistician, and so I struggle to kind of understand the intricacies of, of the effect that that might have. So I'm not a statistician either, but if Darren can answer, that'd be great. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, let's, for the record, make it clear, I'm not a statistician either, but um, we, I do work with the student growth percentiles as, as the mechanism that we use in the state of Utah to measure student growth. It's based on a percentile ranking, and so there will never be a, there'll never be a cap. Um, which allows us to uh, measure growth. My growth is being measured against somebody who was at the same relative academic proficiency that I was uh, the previous year. They put us into a group, and then they'll distribute that group across the percentile ranking the following year to see, um, for instance, if uh, Tiffany and I both had the same amount of growth or if I had more growth than she did on the subsequent test. So, so I don't know that there's a problem. I don't, I don't believe there's a challenge with the issue that you're bringing up. In measuring growth. Okay. Did you have follow up or? Okay. Um, board member Gravett? Um, I would move that we give flexibility to the staff to define education effectiveness. We would do this for the purpose of assessing equitable distribution of educators as required by ESSA. This would be done by using student growth or educator evaluation. Okay, we have a motion. And a second. Is that my hearing devices, or all of you get to hear that? No, it's oh, well, well. Hey, Joel, can you do them? Well, we're going to be voting. I hear pretty quick. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, board member Reby. Uh, my um, experience with our current Sage test is that I haven't seen anybody test off of it yet and get a hundred. So there is a lot of room for growth in it. And even the kids that are scoring a four, there's still a ton of adaptive questions that bring them even higher. So I think that's part of the reason why we moved to the SAGE platform, so that <laughs> everyone could show growth instead of a few kids getting 100 or a bunch of kids getting a 99. So that was kind of the nice part about the SAGE. So I just wanted to state that about the SAGE test that I've seen. Okay, any further discussion to the motion? Is it written down and I can't find it? You, you did such a really good job. Well, why don't I just have you restate it and then we'll vote. Let's keep this moving. Let me turn this back on. There you I go. can email it to you or give you a copy. Um, I move that we give flexibility to staff to define educator effectiveness. Um, we would do this for purposes of assessing equitable distribution of educators as required by ESSA. This would be done by using student growth or educator evaluation. Is that good, Lorraine? Okay, thanks. Okay, got it. That is a motion before the board. I don't see any other discussion. Oh, I knew better. <laughs> Vice Chair Ellis. Sorry, it's late, but I don't think that means we should completely check out. Um, so I apologize if you explained how you were going to do this. I, I'm a little concerned about the just the blanket statement and give flexibility to staff because um, sometimes we may have different philosophies on the level of federal involvement. And so when they come back and say no and we've just given flexibility, what, is, what does that look like? Um, because then, anyway, I'm just con concerned a little bit about just the statement. I'd rather have a plan than just say we're going to give you, and I know you've outlined a thing, but the, the term flexibility is kind of concerning me. Before, before you answer it, let me see what um, Board Member Gravett wanted to say who made the motion. I just wanted to clarify, because I think it's flexibility within those two domains. You're either using student growth or, okay. if that doesn't work, educator evaluation, which we have to do required by ESSA. Okay, so the flexibility you. is uh, contained within those two. Thank you. I just wanted that to help make sure that was clear. So do you still have a question? question? Okay, so we're, we're good. Well, we, we have a motion on the table. So we, not seeing any other discussion. Let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. I think we got one, two, three. Joel Go Wright was aye. You're an aye? Okay, thank you. Okay. Good luck. <coughs>
with that. That's much needed. Keep us posted. Thank you.